Thank you so much for your invitation. To my acknowledgement, my mother in law gave me an unexpected reply. You're not coming with us. You annoy me. Got it? I wondered what made her treat me in this way. She didn't see me as a part of her family. Was it the job I had that bothered her so much? I felt like her words punched me in the face and was too shocked to say anything back. I had managed to endure her abuses so far, but I wasn't gonna let her get away with this one. My name is Tracy. I've been working at a quite a big company. The job itself is nothing, nothing fancy. The job itself is nothing fancy, but I'm surrounded by many good colleagues, including my boss. It's a nice environment that keeps me working here. My job gets quite hectic during peak season, but I never felt stressed because my colleagues and I have a good support system and we work hard as a team. I guess not having a work relationship issue helps me a lot too. My parents have always worried about me working too much. The typical nagging of, when do you plan to get married? I always give them the same nonchalant answer. I still don't feel like it, and it's better not to rush into it. They normally just sigh and shake their heads at me. My life changed when my company threw a big party. I had never felt comfortable in a social setting, but I forced myself to join as it was a part of my job. The dinner was amazing, but I felt dizzy in the crowded hall, so I went out to a balcony to catch a fresh air. I was enjoying the night breeze when I heard a man's voice. It took me a while to realize that someone was speaking to me. Oh, I'm sorry, I was in my own world. The guy standing across from me looked plain but friendly. Are you antisocial? His blunt question made it easier for me to be honest. Yeah, I prefer working. I replied with a wry smile, to which he answered shyly. Me too. I thought I was gonna be the only unsocial one here. He seemed to relax a bit and started asking me questions. His name was John, and we spoke about our work and our interest in traveling and movies. He was really into films and even knew a lot about old Hollywood. I prefer watching a movie at home than going out with a bunch of people. Me too! He sounded a bit enthusiastic about my comment and he immediately said, Whoops! I haven't met anyone I can really talk to about all this, so I got a bit too excited. He seemed embarrassed. I found him cute and we continued our conversation alone on the balcony. We exchanged our numbers at the end of the night. I normally didn't give my number easily to guys except our work, but he was different in the sense that he made me feel relaxed while talking to him. Are you dating someone now? I froze to the out of the blue question of Anne one day at work. She continued without care. Because you start wearing cute outfits to the office, I assume you are meeting someone special after work. I wasn't certain what she meant by dating. Not sure if we are dating, but we have common interest. And we watch movies or have dinner together, that's all. She looked at me puzzled and then rolled her eyes. That is called dating. I guess she could read my mind going, wow. I've been dating. She slapped her forehead and chuckled. I'm happy that you're happy. I had been focusing on my job so much for a long time that my dating monitor must have shut down. Also, it just felt so natural to be with him, so I didn't even think about our status. John and I had smooth sailing. It wasn't a passionate romance like in Hollywood movies but more laid back and we had a peaceful time together. Eventually, we got engaged. Although my work required a lot of me at times, he never complained about it. My colleagues were happy for me and glad to hear that I would be working as usual after my marriage. 
We started planning our wedding and invited our friends as well as all of our colleagues. John's parents had a quiet manner just like him. His dad was courteous and a man of few words. His mom had a demeanor of dependability without being noisy. When we had dinner to introduce each other's family, it wasn't like our parents hit it up, but it was more like a friendly gathering. However, my mom had a look of worry later that night. When I asked her what was wrong, she said, You might have a problem with John's mom later on. But John is a reliable guy, so I hope he can stand it between. John's mom was well mannered, but didn't look bitchy. I shrugged off my mom's comment at that time. Later on, I came to realize how on point my mom was about her. Our wedding and honeymoon were both amazing. I always wanted to go to Rome ever since I watched Rome on holiday. We weren't allowed to sit or eat anything at the Spanish steps where Audrey Hepburn ate gelato, but I was ecstatic just climbing up the stairs. Even though we intentionally went there during off season, there were still tons of tourists trying to take pictures. After we returned home, and just when we felt like we settled down, my work started becoming busier. I had already told John's parents that it normally got overloaded with work before and during long holidays, but it was particularly busy that Christmas season, and I didn't think I could take any days off. John and I went to visit his parents, and I informed them that I would miss the first Christmas with them. John's dad said, We don't really have a big celebration anyway, so don't worry about it. Just come and see us when things settle down. John's mom, too. I agree with him, but she looked like she had more to say. When I was helping her in the kitchen, my instinct came true. She still had a backward idea and thought women should stay at home and take care of the housework. When John came into the kitchen to help, cooking is a woman's work, go relax in the living room. She shooshed him away. Of course, I wasn't allowed to relax. I told myself it was still better than getting all the responsibility dumped on my shoulders. I never imagined the future where I got bullied by my mother in law.、Mm. She sighed deliberately while cutting carrots. I was obliged to ask, What's wrong? She made a low voice. Not to let John and his dad hear her. You can't take Christmas off, can you? It's disappointing and quite rude. I'm sure my husband is actually upset, she mumbled. Um. I was astounded seeing her like that for the first time. It was totally unexpected for me. As she kept chopping carrots, she continued with her lecture. Why didn't you quit such a job when you got married? I hope you're not planning to work for long. I was fidgety and said, I, I haven't decided yet. John and I discussed and both of us planned to work for a while. I stumbled. She stared at me displeasingly. You don't look like a successful Korean woman. Isn't it rather a good riddance for your company if you quit? What did she know about me? When my anger started boiling, she was already setting up a table for dinner. Her behavior was back to normal in front of the others. I was remembering the comment by my mom when she first met John's mom. What's the matter, honey? I was brought back to myself and started taking food to the dining room. My mother in law pretended to know nothing and said, Are you tired from unfamiliar cooking? I suppose you are too busy with work to cook at home. Mom, even though she is busy, she cares about the well being and usually cooks balanced meal. Don't tell me you are bullying her. Of course not. I'm just concerned about her. I was amazed by her quick change of her behavior. My father in law prompted, Let's eat. And we started dinner. John and I left the next morning. 
I probably had a gloomy face, so John asked me, "Are you okay?" I quickly thought it was better not to mention anything. That may cause an issue with their good relationship. It's nothing. I guess I'm a bit tired from work. I covered it up. Oh,、uh, sorry. You didn't get to relax much with my parents around on your days off. I felt even worse to say anything when I saw his concerned face. I didn't want to drag him, a kind-hearted husband, into this. My in-laws and I were never living together nor close to each other, so I only had to deal with her once in a while. It was my wishful thinking. After the last visit, she started calling me once a week. She asked me about John or checked to see if I was slacking on housework. I tried to put not much meaning into her calls, but they eventually started to stress me out. I still wasn't able to say anything to John either. One day, I got a call from her again. As soon as I picked up the phone, she said, "My birthday is coming up next month." I totally forgot about it and said, "Yes, right. What would you like to do?" I don't need you to celebrate my birthday. She quickly shut me down and kept speaking fast, not to let me interrupt. My husband suggested going for a short family trip. Since I love taking a trip, the second of the word made me excited, regardless of what she had said just a minute ago. But my little excitement was short-lived and easily taken away by her. Thank you for the invitation. Are you kidding me? She separated each word to make her comment more sarcastic. I guess you will be invited as it's a family trip. She sounded irritated. But you're not coming with us. You annoy me. Got it? As I was looking for a word, she continued. I want to go only with my family. There is no place for a daughter-in-law. Make up an excuse. Blame it on your work and just don't join us. I will let you organize a trip though. I finally had enough and let my anger flow. I see. Whatever you say. Watch how you speak to me. It sounded like she was screaming, but I hung up on her. As instructed by her email, I booked flights and a nice hotel for their trip. Of course, excluding me. On the early morning of the trip, I told John that I had to take care of an important thing at work and cancel my flight. He was very disappointed, but, well, what can you do if it's work? I will miss you. Let me know if there is anything. He was still sweet. I felt a little bad about this trip, which was to be my retaliation against my mother-in-law. Of course, I felt bad only for John. I did go to work, as I said. I thought about going somewhere alone, but I figured that I would start thinking negatively the moment I had free time. It was actually better to keep myself busy at work. I had no time to wonder what John was doing. Besides. My assistant made a huge mistake on this day. Everyone, including me, was running around to fix the problem, and I didn't even have time to send a text to John. When we finally finished working, it was dusk outside. Phew! Well done, Tracy. It's so late. Is your husband okay? Yeah, I already told him I might be quite busy today. I was so relieved to finish that I was smiling broadly. Then I remembered to check my phone to see if there was any messages from John. There were several missed calls and texts on my screen. They were supposed to come back the day after tomorrow. When I was reading my text, my phone suddenly vibrated. I ran out to the hallway and answered the phone. You need to explain this whole thing. What have you done? My mother-in-law screamed so loud that her voice must have been heard from inside the office. Calm down, please lower your voice. I'm still at work. She didn't care and kept screaming hysterically. Anne popped her head out of the door, but as soon as she saw me, 
She sensed something and closed the door. How the hell do you know the GM of this hotel? My mother in law shouted. She explained frantically that when John told the front desk the number of guests was changed to three upon check in, the staff told him it was originally booked for the three. She was too late to interfere and was questioned by John and his dad. She eventually had to come clean about what she had done to me. You know, I told you I work in the travel industry. That hotel was going through a hard time at one point. I really liked the service and amazing scenery around it, so I helped with the marketing to attract young crowds. People started coming because it was great for social media photos and unique services. I know the GM since then. She was listening with heavy breathing. I could imagine her face looking like the possessed girl from The Exorcist. The GM asked us why we are having a family trip without you. You arranged all this, didn't you? I calmly answered the enraged mother in law. No way, it's peak season right now. I didn't think he had time for such a thing. I pretended to be innocent. The GM and I had a good relationship. So when I was at the hotel for work last time, I told him that I got married and my last name had changed. John's last name was unique, so the GM must have noticed. John must have heard his mom's yelling and came over. I heard his voice in the back, and then he took the phone from her. I'm really sorry, honey. I had no idea what my mom was doing to you. Don't worry, babe. I didn't tell you either. I got scolded by the GM. He told me to take really good care of you and said it's rare to meet someone as compassionate as you. I felt like I was being scolded by your dad. I laughed at his comment. The GM was about the same age as my dad. He also had a daughter who was married, so maybe he did take it personally. I will see you tomorrow. We need to talk about this. Love you, Han. We hung up the phone. After they came back, we had a family meeting at John's parents' house. My mother in law was really not interested in what I did for work, so she didn't even know that John's company was a subcontractor of mine. John was told by the GM that if he didn't take good care of me, the hotel was going to reevaluate the contract with his company. It will affect your performance review. When the GM mentioned it, my mother in law finally realized that she interfered with her own son's success and had greatly regretted her action. It probably didn't have that much of an impact on his career, but she had no work experience of her own and totally believed it. She looks remorseful and shrunk a half size during the meeting. I will never take a trip with you. I will only go with Tracy from now on. To John's comment, she scurried to defend herself. Please forgive me. I will tell the GM I will never bully Tracy, so you will have no problem at. Before she could finish her sentence, John grimaced and cut her off. You are so wrong. This has nothing to do with my work. If you can treat Tracy nicer, I will never speak to you again. She was sobbing at his words. I'm really disappointed to know you are such a terrible person. Her husband condemned her. Then she took my hands in hers. I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. I will never do such horrible things. Honestly, I wasn't convinced by her words. We will see from your action from now on. I've been too oblivious. I will keep my eyes on you now. John said in an authoritative tone, and then he turned to face me. I'm sorry again. I'm not gonna let her do whatever she wants from now on. He held me tight in his arms. I apologize too. It's unbelievable what she has done. My father in law too gave me a warm hug. I was overwhelmed with a feeling of relief. Since then, my mother in law stopped criticizing my work. And making a call just to tell me some sarcasm. Old contact had to go through John, 
and no more complaints about when I could and couldn't visit. I even thought she started to respect my work. My father in law had never done chores at home, and he was told by John, You need to start helping mom with housework. He was struggling with cooking, but he helped with cleaning and started to show more appreciation toward his wife. The atmosphere of the house became a little more joyful since then. Did you worry that I was gonna take my mom's side? When John asked me, I honestly told him that I didn't want to create a cause to break their relationship. I'm glad we could turn the bad experience into a better family. Thank you, Han. He gave me a kiss on my forehead. Three months after the family trip, the four of us were staying at the same hotel. Glad to see that it's still popular, I happily commented to the GM. It's because of you, he said with a shy smile. My mother in law told him, I'm very sorry for the incident. I've been scolded by my family and I deeply regret it now. I apologize for making you worried. John has been a very good husband. He looked at us family wholeheartedly and said, Tracy saved this hotel and me, so please, please take care of her. He really sounded like my own dad. I realized then that I was valued by many people and I felt grateful for that. The trip turned out to be better than I had imagined. I had been there numerous times for work, so I was like a local guide. I took my family to secret spots, and we were all excited like kids. It was the perks of this job and my efforts. My in-laws and I would keep a reasonable distance and a good relationship in the future.